Caitlin Clark. Caitlin Clark. Caitlin Clark. Do I need to call you the, the female version of Steph Curry, or do I need to call Steph Curry the male version of Caitlin Clark? If you were an opposing coach game planning to stop Caitlin Clark, what would you do? Pray. Caitlin Clark has become the face of women's basketball in the past few years. Her influence alone has given women's basketball a never before seen attention. And the craziest part is, she's not even in the pros yet. Caitlin Clark has the entire basketball world talking about her. So it's only fair to give our two cents and talk about how good Caitlin Clark really is. We'll dive into how Caitlin Clark became the megastar she is today, how incredible her run has been at Iowa, and how we think she'll develop at the next level of her basketball career. Caitlin Clark grew up in the state of Iowa and first picked up a basketball at five years old. She was so advanced for her age that she was playing in boys' rec leagues growing up. She was a multi-sport athlete as well, playing softball, volleyball, soccer, tennis, and golf along with basketball. But once she made it to high school, she made basketball her primary sport and never looked back. She played four years of high school basketball and absolutely dominated. She was so incredible that we'd be here for hours talking about every single accomplishment she had. So let's hit on some of the featured moments from her high school basketball career. In her junior year, she had a 60-point game, which was the second-highest scoring total in Iowa women's basketball history. She even led the entire state of Iowa in scoring as a junior, averaging 32.6 points per game. Her senior year was much of the same dominance, as she led the state in points again at 33.4 points per game. She also averaged 8 rebounds, 4 assists, and 2.7 steals in her senior season. She finished her career with the 4th most points and 6th most 3-pointers made in Iowa women's basketball history, and it was clear that she had the chance to become a star at the college level. She was ranked the 4th best player in her class by ESPN and initially committed to Notre Dame but would eventually stay home and attend her hometown school, the University of Iowa. So we knew how much of a star Caitlin was in high school, but still had more to prove. Going into college, she was still a hometown girl from Iowa who didn't gain much media attention at this point. But even as early as freshman year, she knew she could make a name for herself. She entered her freshman year at Iowa as the team's starting point guard, and in just her first college game ever, she gave us a glimpse into the superstar she would become. In her debut, she had 27 points, 8 rebounds, and 4 assists in a 96-81 win. The rest of her freshman year was much of the same, as she finished her freshman year averaging 26.6 points, 7.1 assists, and 5.9 rebounds per game. Some major highlights from her freshman year was her 37-point performance against Minnesota, 39-point performance against Nebraska, and a triple-double against Western Illinois, which had not been done by an Iowa women's player since 2015. Unfortunately, her season would end in the Sweet 16 to the one-seeded UConn, but her freshman year was one of the best we've ever seen in women's basketball. She was the Division I Co-Freshman of the Year, First Team All-Big Ten, All-American honors, and even led the country in total points, assists, field goals, and three-pointers as a freshman. Now you might ask, since Caitlin Clark was so dominant, why didn't she just go one and done and declare for the WNBA draft? She's clearly good enough to play in the pros. Well, unlike the NBA, one and done doesn't exist in the WNBA. In women's college basketball, players must turn 22 years old the year they opt into the draft. Athletes also need to be four years removed from high school if they want to enter the draft. Players could go overseas and get professional experience before being WNBA draft eligible, but women's college basketball has been known to be the best route to get to the WNBA, so a lot of these women's athletes just stick it out the four years in college. So crazy enough, Caitlin Clark had three more years of college basketball to play, and this is after breaking records as a freshman. 
Let's be real, the WNBA draft eligibility rules should be changed, because clearly Clark could have played at the pros at this point. But since the eligibility rules are what they are, we knew that we can all just sit back, relax, and watch a historic college career from Caitlin Clark. Her sophomore year consisted of much of the same dominance as her freshman year, and she was slowly becoming more and more of a household name. And she didn't just continue to dominate, she continued to break records. Her 44 points on January 2, 2022 was the most by any woman in a single game at Carver Hawkeye Arena. And her stat lines were getting so insane that she was breaking men's records too. She became the first Division I player, regardless of gender, to have a 30-point triple-double in back-to-back -back games. And although she had multiple 40-point games in her sophomore year, the one that stands out the most was her 46-point outing against Michigan, which was absolutely jaw-dropping as 25 of those points came in the fourth quarter alone. She won the Big Ten tournament in her sophomore year, which included a 41-point and 9-rebound game in the conference semifinal. And although her season ended in a shocking round of 32 loss to Creighton, she finished her sophomore year averaging 27 points, 8 rebounds, and 8 assists, and took home the Big Ten Player of the Year along with All-American honors. Caitlin Clark's junior year is when she really put her name on. Caitlin's junior season was nothing short of historic, as she didn't just put up insane stat lines, but continued to break various records. Along with her averages of 27.8 points, 8.6 assists, and 7.1 rebounds per game, she recorded her seventh triple-double of her career, which broke a Big Ten record. She also became the fastest player to reach 2,000 career points since the year 2000. She also moved to second in Division I women's history in total triple-doubles, only trailing Sabrina Ionescu. In the Elite Eight of March Madness, she had a 40 triple-double, which was the first 40-point triple-double in March Madness history in either the men or women's tournament. In the Final Four, she had an insane 42 points, 8 assists, and 6 rebounds, knocking off the defending champs, the University of South Carolina. She also became the first player in tournament history to have back-to-back 40-point -back games. She led the University of Iowa to their first NCAA championship in program history. Although the season ended in a loss to Angel Reese and the LSU Tigers, Clark had an impressive 30 points and 8 assists, along with 8 three-pointers made, the most by any player in the title game. Her 191 total points in the NCAA tournament were also the most by any player in the history of a single NCAA tournament run. Of course, with all her success, she earned every award possible. Conference Player of the Year, National Player of the Year, if there was an award given out that year, she probably won it. Many considered Clark's run as one of the greatest seasons in college basketball ever, and she still had to return for her senior year. In just her second game of the year, she had a 34-point triple-double in a win over Virginia Tech. In the very next game, she became the Iowa women's all-time leading scorer. Then just one week later, she surpassed Kelsey Plum for the most 30-point games in women's Division I history. Her season has been filled with record-breaking performances and sheer dominance. She's averaged 31.8 points, 8.8 assists, and 7.3 rebounds this season. But among all of the historic performances and record-breaking stat lines, there are two records in particular that put her in GOAT talk. The first record she broke was held by none other than the greatest three-point shooter of all time, Steph Curry. The record she took from Steph was the most three-pointers made by any player in Division I over a single season, which she broke in her conference tournament quarterfinal way before March Madness even started. The second record she broke was not just the all-time women's scoring record, she broke that easily on February 15th, but the Division I all-time scoring record regardless of gender, which was held by Pete Maravich. She broke that record on March 3rd off a of 30. There's no denying how good Caitlin Clark has been over the course of her college career. But with all the accomplishments and records she's broken, there is still one major thing she is missing a championship. Caitlin Clark off sheer eye test alone might be the but adding a championship could help boost her resume to having the greatest college career of all time as well. 
that the Indiana Fever will select her with the first overall pick in the WNBA draft. But let's actually break down her game and understand why she is this good and how she'll project as a WNBA talent. Her six-foot stature is big for a point guard in the WNBA, as the average height for a point guard in the WNBA is only 5'9". She has a great handle, a quick first step, and attacks the rim with force and speed, and can finish all types of ways. And when the defense collapses to contest her drive, she can pass among the best of them. Her passing ability often gets overlooked from her incredible shot-making ability. But she's an elite passer as well. Her size helps her rebound efficiently, and her lateral speed and size allows her to defend almost anyone on the court. Truthfully, she is the perfect prospect for a guard in the women's game, and her offensive skill set is the female hybrid of Magic and Steph in the women's game, and is a talent that has never been seen before in women's basketball. Caitlin Clark is arguably the greatest women's college basketball player of all time, and her influence on women's basketball has been compared to Steph Curry's influence on the men's game. Caitlin Clark has shined a new light on the capabilities of women on the basketball court, and she is changing the culture of women's basketball. There's living proof in that statement, too, because she is putting a record number of fans in the seats. The 2023 National Championship between Iowa and LSU was the most watched women's basketball championship in history, and the game in which Clark surpassed Pete Maravich for the most points in Division I history was the most watched women's regular season basketball game in 25 years. Caitlin Clark is generational and has changed women's basketball in a way that has never been seen before. The crazy thing about Clark is that people are already putting her in the women's basketball GOAT conversations before even making the pros. But it doesn't even seem to even matter because Clark is flashing a shot-making ability that has never been seen in women's basketball before. But let's get your thoughts. Can Caitlin Clark be the greatest women's basketball player of all time? Will she live up to the hype in the WNBA? Let us know in the comments below.